Welcome to Lesson 12. Today, we are going to determine how endothermic and exothermic changes are recognized. By the end of this lesson, you should recognize a reaction as being endothermic or exothermic. Identify the delta H or change in heat for a reaction and write the heat term in a reaction. Make sure you copy the differences between chemical changes and physical changes into your notes. Hi class. Okay, now I'm going to teach you how to define a chemical change from a physical change. The first thing you need to know about a chemical change is that the formula will always change. The second thing you need to know about physical changes is that physical changes formulas never change. Okay, now we now that we know what chemical and physical changes are, we're going to define them. Notice here that these chemicals are not the same as this chemical. So now we know it's a chemical change. The second one has the same formula. So now we know it's a physical change. These formulas are also the same, so it's a physical. These, however, are not the same. These are not the same. And these are the same, so it's a physical. Identify which is a physical change. Physical changes don't have formula changes. The physical changes that we are going to look at are called phase changes. Every time a phase change, the potential energy changes as the position of the particles change. For simple phase changes, adding energy causes the potential energy to increase and the entropy, also known as the randomness, to increase as well. While removing energy causes potential energy to decrease and entropy or randomness also decreases. It is important that you are familiar with the terminology of all six phase changes. Remember that in chemistry we often call melting fusion. Also, the phase change that goes from a solid directly to a gas is called sublimation. You must add heat energy to cause something to sublime. So this is endothermic. So fusion, vaporization, and sublimation are endothermic phase changes, while condensation, freezing, and deposition are exothermic. Looking at the phase changes from the reactions earlier, we can determine, based on the phase of matter, whether the reaction is endothermic or exothermic. In the first reaction, we begin with a liquid and we end with a solid. In order to turn a liquid to a solid, you must remove heat. So this phase change is exothermic. In the next reaction, you can see that we begin with liquid nitrogen and turn it to gaseous nitrogen. To change a liquid to a gas, you must add heat. This change is endothermic. The final phase change is that of dry ice. Solid carbon dioxide is called dry ice. When it sublimes, it turns to a gas. You must add heat to change a solid to a gas, so this sublimation process is endothermic.
We write heat changes in chemical reactions differently for endo and exothermic reactions. In endothermic reactions, heat is absorbed. We will always write heat before the reaction arrow. So heat is a reactant. In the first example, you can see where heat is just used as a word. And in the second example, you can see the 334 joules of heat is an exact quantity of heat. In endothermic reactions, the change in heat or the difference in potential energy between the products and the reactants is always positive. For exothermic reactions, this is different. Since heat is released, our delta H, or our difference in the potential energy of the products minus the potential energy of the reactants, will be negative. It would be lovely if we could simply write the reaction showing that we subtract heat from the reactants, but there is a rule in chemistry where we are not allowed to have subtraction in a chemical equation. Therefore, so instead, we will move the heat term to the product side, or after the arrow of the chemical reaction. Just like endothermic processes, we can write the word heat after the arrow. We can write the exact amount of heat, 334 joules. And the placement of the heat term, whether it is the word heat or the exact quantity of joules, indicates that this process is exothermic. Writing in the heat term in a chemical reaction is not as simple as a physical change. There is a general rule, however, that always applies. Making bonds release energy. That's why almost every substance in the universe is a compound and not a simple element. Elements form compounds to obtain more stable noble gas valence electron configuration. This stability is reflected in their release of energy. Making bonds is ex The reverse is also true. Breaking bonds or losing your stable noble gas valence electron configuration requires energy. Breaking bonds is always endothermic. The problem is that most chemical reactions do not involve only a single bond being broken or a single bond being made, but instead bonds are made and broken simultaneously. Look at this example of the combustion or burning of methane. Notice that you have to break the bonds that hold the red carbon atom to the yellow hydrogen atoms. You also have to break the bonds that hold the green oxygen atoms together. Then new bonds form between the red and green atoms and the green and yellow atoms. This is a combination of bond making and bond breaking. Reference table I gives the heat of reaction or the difference between the potential energy of the products minus the potential energy of the reactants for many chemical reactions. On this table, chemical reactions with a negative value are exothermic and chemical reactions with a positive value are endothermic. Here, the top reaction is the combustion of methane. Notice that the delta H value is a negative number. If I wanted to write the word heat or the heat term in this exothermic reaction, the word heat or the value of heat must appear after the arrow or on the product side. Look at the placement of the heat term of this reaction. Does this qualify as endothermic or exothermic. In this reaction, notice how one substance, diatomic chlorine, becomes two separate chlorine atoms.
Find the dissolving process for ammonium chloride on table I. Dissolving in water is found on the bottom third of reference table I. Use the delta H to figure out if the reaction is endothermic or exothermic. That's the end of the video. See you in class. Bring your questions with you.